Hello everyone. In today's session, let us see the synthesis of nanomaterials that is module 5, chapter 2, concept. In the last session, you have seen the introduction to nanomaterials where definition and size dependent properties of the nanomaterials were covered. Let us quickly once recall the concept. So, nanomaterial is defined as a material which is synthesized with any of one parameter like length, breadth or area mentioned or maintained in a nanoscale. The, whenever you go for a synthesis by nano approach, the particle synthesized will be having different property than that of a bulk. It's thermal, catalytic, mechanical, optical, electrical all properties could be altered by synthesizing it in the nanoscale which you had studied under size dependent property of nanomaterial. So in today's discussion let us see what are the approaches we go for uh, we can adopt for synthesizing nanomaterial in particularly let us discuss sol gel method. So outcome of this discussion could be viewed as follows. The student would be able to list the different approaches of any nanomaterial synthesis, understand the concept of sol formation, explain different steps involved in the synthesis by sol gel method, draw or write a schematic flow for the method, write the reactions involved in the synthesis, also list the advantages of the process. Before going for sol gel process, let us once uh, see what are the different uh, synthesis approaches for a nanomaterial we can adopt. So first method is called as a top down approach and second is called as bottom up approach. The most simplified way I have written here what the approach stand for. First one is called as a top down or disassemble. So here we take a material which is which we call as bulk material that is actually synthesized by a normal approach and we go for disassemble it bulk becomes powder and further it is uh, separated or disassembled to get a nanoparticle. The bottom up approach is the uh, we have a uh, approach which is exactly opposite to the top down so we call it as a assemble. Now here by synthesis we prepare an atom. This atom aggregate or they uh, grow and we call them as clusters that is actually assembly of atoms and then they will assemble further to give a nanoparticle. In order to have the visualization the process could be viewed simply this way. So here this uh, if you imagine as atom, aggregation of the atoms you call as clusters and these clusters would give a nanoparticle and you call that as a bottom up approach. The top down could be viewed this way. We synthesize a compound by normal method. We call it as a bulk material. The bulk material would be dissembled to get a powder and further dissembling the same would yield a nanoparticle and we call that approach as a top down approach. This image is given so that uh, you can remember the concept uh, in an easy way. This uh, also explains the same that is in approaches of synthesis but here we have an added point. Usually top down approach refers to slicing or successive cutting of bulk material to get nano sized particle. Most of the time top down approach involves physical approaches like cutting, grinding etc. And uh, bottom up approach would uh, involve some chemical synthesis. So bottom up approach refers to build up of the material from the bottom. How? Atom by atom, molecule by molecule. Here Atom by atom deposition leads to the formation of self-assembly of atoms and you call that self-assembly as cluster. And then these clusters come together, they form a self-assembled monolayers on the surface. It's actually shown here and that is thereby we create a nanoparticle. Now let us see one particular process under bottom up approach that is sol gel process. In fact in the syllabus we have to discuss three bottom up approach by sol gel method 
precipitation method and chemical vapor deposition method in this session i will be explaining the first method of synthesis that is sol gel process as shown in the diagram that involves a sol gel technique that is sol to gel sol to gel technique is involved that is why the process is called as sol gel process also the method is most widely employed to prepare nano sized metal oxide materials remember here we prepare most of the time metal oxide nano particles the process could be viewed to have five important steps uh, from the starting compound to the synthesis of nano particle so first step as narrated in this slide is nothing but formation of stable solution of a metal alkoxide in water or in one line a sol of the metal is formed or sol of the metal oxide is formed metal alkoxide is the starting precursor precursor means from which we start the process metal is m alkane group is represented by r they are linked by an oxygen so we call it as metal alkoxide now go through the sentence let us relate it to equation sentence says there is formation of a stable solution of metal alkoxide in water now come back to this metal alkoxide is made to react with the water any such process we call as hydrolysis so a metal hydrox alkoxide undergoes hydrolysis to give hydrated system or what you call it as a solvated system and this particular system we call here as a sol so sol is nothing but a system which is covered or which is encircled with the molecules of hydration such a system is called as a solvated system or sol in simple uh, you can imagine the process easily with this particular picture imagine you have a cation and anion that is actually a salt you put water to that which is shown by a circles around now what happens on solvation each ion this is a cation this is a anion imagine then that is covered by the water molecule they have shown ho h2o like this so that is covered by the water molecule so any system where ions are covered with the hydration we call it as a sol so sol gel for process is viewed to have first step formation of sol from the metal alkoxide process is hydrolysis remember this equation now as per the name sol must be transferred to gel so the second step is the sol of the metal oxide in water or any dilute acid would yield a gel how that happens is the moh which is the product of first step sol this is nothing but a solvated system undergo condensation with one more mor what is mor that is nothing but a precursor mor so moh would react with one more metal alkoxide to form mom sometimes also written as m2o that is a metal oxide gel okay and this process where a sol reacts with the precursor to give the same is a sol to gel transformation called as condensation many such condensation would takes place so that a sol is converted to a gel so this can be also called as a poly condensation step first step is hydrolysis second step is poly condensation remember the equation then once the gel is formed in the third step the transformation of the gel to a solid mass takes place how that takes place is process is called as synthesis now synthesis the solvent molecules will be oozing out of the gel this can be also called as aging of the gel actually that takes some days up to 7 days synthesis can happen we keep the gel as such the solvent molecules will be oozing out of the pores of the gel 
like you know how we see the uh, process with the milk products and protein derivatives in the same way so that gel becomes a hard solid mass next step we have to go for drying the gel now here the by chance any traces of water or any volatile liquid may be present imagine in synergesis stills after synergesis also some molecules may be present we have to go for drying drying actually could be carried out by two means that is actually supercritical drying and thermal drying okay that i will explain with the diagram in the next slide so when you go for different approaches in drying you will get different gels but one line we can state in theory as take the solid mass go for drying so that any last traces of solid molecules or volatile liquid if present they would be removed once so obtained mass then must be calcined calcination is a quite a familiar process where we heat it to high temperature in the presence of oxygen so here when you do go for calcination it helps you to go against rehydration that is actually the dehydrated solid mass if we directly go for usage there is a possibility that they might absorb moisture and may undergo rehydration so rehydration could be stopped by calcination process after that a little above 800 degree if we heat thermal decomposition of the gel would takes place and thermal decomposition would yield the particles which have fall on the nano scale so this completes uh, the synthesis of uh, uh, nano particles by sol gel here you need not remember the diagrams they are given for uh, understanding you remember the sentences with the two equations so first one is hydrolysis of metal alkoxide to give the sol now here one more point could be added the process is facilitated by adding tetraethyl ortho silicate that is nothing but uh, called as a tos tetraethyl ortho silicate in order to optimize the yield tos could be used then in the second step sol undergoes polycondensation to yield a gel and remember the equation and then go for third step that is synergesis gel to solid mass fourth step drying of the gel fifth step calcination of the gel and next step heat above 800 thermal decomposition to get the nano particles so here i have given one schematic representation which might help you to remember the process so here first we have to take a precursor solution that is nothing but what we wrote as MOR precursor is starting material for the process then make it to undergo hydrolysis reaction with water condensation MOH plus MOR reaction then stir the medium well we will get a gel then one have to go for drying here actually synergesis is not shown drying and I said drying could be two ways supercritical drying and thermal drying. Accordingly, supercritical would give a gel, you call it as aerogel, thermal, you call it as zero gel, aerogel and zero gel formation. From that, you calcine to get the final compound of nanoparticles. This is the uh, diagram which most of the textbook refer. Uh, to explain the sol gel process but uh, this is uh, quite uh, um, having many steps uh, that is actually in sol gel process what way we can get the yield let us now once go through the process so that uh, uh, it could be a revision kind so here we take solution which undergoes condensation hydrolysis to give sol sol to condensation to get gel now this gel could be dried by supercritical condition you get a aerogel color of the same and texture also mentioned go for sintering the same we get a dense ceramic metal oxide nanoparticle but uh, imagine you have taken the gel from this step and you went for direct drying you get a zero gel that is thermal drying zero gel on grinding you can get a powder nanoparticle 
one more step down from the sol also we can continue that is colloid so here you take the colloid or sol go for spray dip or spin coat then we will get a dense thin film of the nanoparticle if you draw fibers out of it nano fiber could be obtained sol could be also directly dried to get a powder so here this method actually tells you the sol gel method if you use you can prepare a ceramic nanoparticle powdered nanoparticle fiber nanoparticle also you can get dense thin films of nanoparticle so in general i had told metal oxide nanoparticle is prepared they can be prepared in various forms by using sol gel method now let us see the advantages of the same so first one it is very simple among the methods used economic and effective high pure compound could be obtained as there is no impurity penetration possible during the synthesis then uniform nano structure could be obtained that is particle to particle uniformity in the structure is observed easily shapeable as per our expectation it is observed to be have low processing temperature only for calcination high temperature is required rest all the process carried out at low processing temperature and by chance if we want to add an impurity that is dopant we can control the concentration of the dopant and uh, the desired property could be achieved with the nano particles now let us quickly once go through the sol gel process so here one point rem you remember that is method used for synthesis of metal oxide material then first step formation of sol second step formation of gel hydrolysis and condensation two reactions then synergesis drying and calcination then some advantages of the method in the next session we will see the synthesis of nanoparticle by chemical vapor deposition method thank you